Hello, welcome to this Demon Lock devlog. It's been a while since the last one. I'm happy to see you guys. And in this devlog, I'm going to talk about how I took my battle system and my game's UI system, all the code from that, and I deleted it all and got rid of it. Demon Lock the game started off as a quick three month project that I was doing with my brother. And we were able to build an alpha during those three months. And then Caleb left the project and went to go do other things. And I got the bright idea to make the project bigger and better and add 3D. And there were so many cool things. And, you know, scope creep came in and got the better of me there. And I've, it's been a year now since then. And I've pretty consistently worked on the project over this, over that whole year. Despite that, I can't actually imagine a world in which I actually finish the game. And at one point I thought Caleb was going to be able to come back on and help work on the game with me. And I was excited because I could really use the help, but that didn't end up panning out. And I remember just staring at the screen, staring at my computer screen blankly and looking at the game and all the code and feeling like there was no way I was going to finish it. I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I have a love for this game and I don't want to drop it. I really like the game. I want to finish. And so I knew that I needed to come up with some sort of a plan. And I asked myself, I, I started to formulate this question in my mind, which was, why was I better at finishing games as a 17-year-old or 18-year-old? I finished multiple games back then. Then I am now. I'm a, by all accounts, I should be better at it now. I'm older, right? Better work ethic, theoretically. I... I'm a better programmer. I'm a better artist. There's so many things now that are better. Why do I have a harder time finishing the games? And I had an intuition kind of that the reason was because of constraints. As a 17 year old or an 18 year old, I was actually, I was a worse programmer, but because of that, that was a constraint that I had to work around and I was able to finish games because I had those constraints that limited me and those limitations actually helped me to finish. This realization gave me a plan and I opened up Google Drive and made a new document and I wrote a list of constraints that I wanted to give myself. And I'll give you a few of the big ones uh, like no text, pixel art graphics using a very specific palette, I was already doing that one with Demon Lock. Low resolution, 320 by 180. 8-bit sound effects. Uh, one of the biggest constraints was I want to make the game within 48 hours uh, over a, you know, a week or two, not 48 hours at once. And then use a, a month or two or longer potentially, depending on how well the prototype is received, to polish and add content to the game. So that's probably the biggest constraint that I'm going to be using here. And I listed off some reasons why I wanted to use these constraints and I'll link to this document and a Twitter, uh, Twitter thread that I made so you can kind of get more details on that if you want. And I listed off some tools that I want to try using as well. Those are my constraints. The next thing I did was mock up some of the visuals for the game. And I was always going to be doing the overworld differently than what I had originally. But uh, other areas of the game I hadn't figured out yet. So I started with a new character, uh, the summoner. And this is, I did eight directions for the sprite. And then I did a little cabin, some interesting kind of walls, trees. And I wanted to do a skull wall. I think those are kind of interesting and I felt like it fit thematically with the game. So I made this skull wall. Potentially that will show up in the void as you explore it and look for demons. 
And then the grass as an encounter zone didn't make sense for the theme of the game, right? That was something from Pokemon. So I made like this void mist encounter zone. I then started working on a chapel that will be in the main town. As you go through the game, you'll be able to heal your demons in this chapel on some sort of an altar. And so I kind of made it run down. It's kind of falling apart. It's, it's not kept up. It's kind of like an abandoned chapel. And, and I think I was really happy with how this turned out. Actually, I'm excited to see how the rest of the town turns out. Kind of the main hub area will be the town. And this is going to be a central part of that town and kind of a place of refuge for you as you get back and heal your demons. And then I redid the battles. And the no text constraint is a really hard one. I might bend the rules on that one, we'll see. But as much as I do miss the 3D, I know a lot of you are going to be a little disappointed at this change in direction. I wouldn't say a lot of you, I know that some of you will be. Uh, and there's parts of it that I miss too. But I am really happy with this new look with these creatures and I'm excited to play around with the battle system and come up with something that I think will support what was truly good about the alpha. There was, there was something special about the alpha that Caleb and I made. And I think the main thing that was special was the kind of tension and release with entering into the void and then having your demons with you and using them as like a resource to try and make it to the end and, and get back to town. And then you get back to town and you're safe. And I like that tension release. I want the battles to support that well. And I'm looking at more like real time stuff, similar to FTL, where things have like a charge, like they take time to charge up, but they happen in real time. We'll see, we'll see how that kind of stuff goes. After I was happy with the mockups, I opened up the project and I went through and deleted a large majority of the code and the scenes in the game. And I didn't delete them all. There's some stuff that I saved. I saved the movement system, the collisions, uh, and I saved the random level generation stuff. And I'll show you some of that stuff here real quick. Uh, here's the character. Here's the movement. I animated the character moving in eight different directions. I still might polish this animation a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with it. And here's, you know, the, the chapel here. You can't actually go inside of it yet, but I really like the mood and the feeling that this all brings. Let's look at the void. This is basically the random level generation stuff, which it's working as well. I was able to repurpose this. It doesn't look good yet because I have to kind of redo how it's all going to look still. But the level generation works and you can technically enter into battles still. And it shows kind of the new battle mock-up. And I'm really excited with this new direction. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's, uh, this video has definitely been a little bit more casual and I probably want to do more devlogs like this. I'm going to try and make them interesting still so that you uh, feel engaged while watching them, but try and reduce the amount of time that I have to spend editing because if I want to do devlogs and actually work on the game, I'm going to have to figure out how to find a balance there. So if you have feedback for me, let, let me know. If you want to learn to make your own games in Godot, this devlog and my channel is sponsored basically by my own course, the One Bit Godot course. And you can check out that. There'll be a link in the description. I really appreciate all of the people who have supported that course so far, who are now part of my private Discord for, for support. And I can help answer questions and stuff that they have there. It's a great community. It's one of the best, probably, features of the course, actually. There's a lot of good people there. So I want to thank them. I want to thank everyone who has supported me on Patreon as well and through the Kickstarters. And I will talk to you all later.